Is it a big deal if you're drinking fluoridated water? Yes, yeah. big deal. There are now over 300 animal and human studies which shows that fluoride is neurotoxic. And the, the second part of that is even though we've been trying for many years to get this information and get the EPA Water Division to take this into account, they're supposed to be right now reassessing, uh, uh, doing a risk assessment to determine a new safe drinking water standard for fluoride. Uh, the, the one we are under right now is completely archaic. It's four parts per million. It's based upon crippling skeletal fluorosis, not even the first symptoms of skeletal fluorosis. Uh, Mexico is 1.5. Canada is 1.5. The World Health Organization is 1.5. But we are four parts per million. Mm -hmm. When the National Research Council reviewed fluoride, uh, fluoride's toxicity in uh, 2006, they concluded that the current safe standard is not safe, it's not protective of health, and they asked the EPA to do a new risk assessment. That's 2006. And they still have not done it 10 years later. For 10 years, we've been using unsafe standard. And what they're saying now, which is pathetically unscientific, unscientific they're saying if we control for severe dental fluorosis, which is a mottling of the teeth, we will control for every other body tissue if we protect for severe dental fluorosis. Even though we have presented them data from China which shows that children with very mild, mild and moderate dental fluorosis have lowered IQ. So you can't say that severe dental fluorosis is the most important endpoint. Obviously, lowering of IQ is not only more important, but it's more sensitive to fluoride's toxicity. Um, should we, before we drink water, should we put a glass in the sun and let it sit there 15 minutes every time before we drink? Possibly. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Possibly. I haven't seen studies that, uh, that demonstrate it, but According to theory, this, uh, the, this light should build fourth phase water, which is good for your health. Um, just a follow up to the fluoride, should we be using fluoride free toothpaste? I haven't used fluoridated toothpaste ever since I got into this issue 21 years ago. At my wife twisted my arm. I didn't want it. But yes, we should not be using fluoridated toothpaste. Or rather, I think fluoridated toothpaste should be under prescription, especially for children. Um, obviously, fluoridated toothpaste makes much more sense than drinking fluoridated water. When you drink fluoridated water, you're exposing every tissue in the body. When you use fluoridated toothpaste, you are exposing the organ that you're trying to help. And even the proponents, the CDC, says, that the predominant benefit of fluoride is topical, not systemic. So it's logical. If you want fluoride, brush it on, on your teeth. But unfortunately, as I think many of you know, the gums are particularly good at absorbing things. That's why you have sublingual, uh, you know, for heart medicine and stuff like that. It's a good place to absorb things. So you're going to get a peak. A child drink, using fluoridated toothpaste at a thousand parts per million is going to get a little spike. And whether or not that little spike is the same as, as being swallowing a fluoridated water all day long, we, we don't know at this point. But um, I think the safest thing, in fact, you know, one of the things that we should be doing is to look at what Europe is doing. 97% of European countries do not fluoridate their water. Right. And, and yet their teeth, according to World Health Organization data, is just as good, if not better, than ours. So we should be looking at the programs in Scotland, Child Smile Program, and the program in Denmark, Nexo. These programs are cost effective. They go to the target, they go to the, the infant, and they go to the parent. They educate them about better diet, um, less sugar, more fruit and vegetables, and teach the kids in their first lesson at primary school how to brush your teeth, how to brush your teeth properly. And that's, that's the real solution. Tooth decay is not caused by a lack of fluoride, 
Fluoride is not a nutrient. Um, it's caused by too much sugar. And talking about toxics, that's probably the number one toxic Absolutely. in the world. It's probably done more damage to more people. And I should, sorry, to, this, this quick, quick answer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Once you get me on this, you can't stop me. The, in the United States Public Health Service endorsed fluoridation in 1950. In 1949, the Sugar Research Foundation, which is the lobby for 130 sugar interests, said, we need to find a way to reduce tooth decay without reducing sugar consumption. Uh, then they poured money into nutrition departments, even created nutrition departments at places like Harvard, and gave a lot of money to people like Fred Stair at Harvard, um, to promote sugar as a nutrient. He argued in Congress that uh, Coca-Cola was a nutritious drink and he also promoted uh, fluoridation. And in the Boston Globe today, there was an expose that both Fred Stair and a colleague, both of whom are dead now, um, had at the behest of the sugar lobby argued and showed papers that flora, uh, the sugar did not cause heart disease. So these guys were so much in bed with the sugar lobby. And the sugar lobby has never, ever stopped promoting uh, fluoridation. They are the number one beneficiary of fluoridation to distract parents from the, what the parents should be doing is to make sure their kids are not guzzling gallons of sh sugared uh, drinks and, and mm -hmm. cookies and candy and everything else. They've taken the eye off the prize, and one of the results is this massive increase in obesity. Wow. Can, I, can I just add to that? And, and because fluoride is a uh, deterrent for iodine, and iodine is so important for our thyroid. So, so many kids are lacking iodine now, leading to thyroid problem and thyroid cancer. We're seeing that enormous uh, risk for that now. And uh, fluoride is big time that we've got in our water every day. In fact, doctors in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s in Argentina, France, and Germany gave fluoride to patients with hyperthyroidism, overactive mm -hmm. thyroid, to lower the activity mm -hmm. of the thyroid. Now we have an, almost an epidemic of hypothyroidism yes. in this country. Mm -hmm. And no health agency in this country mm -hmm. has looked at the possibility that this epidemic mm -hmm. of hypothyroidism is either caused by uh, excess fluoride exposure or exacerbated by fluoride exposure. Nothing. The whole principle, once the US government endorsed fluoridation, they showed no interest in honest research on the toxicity of fluoride. Their approach has been, if you don't look, you don't find, and have concluded that the absence of study is the same as absence of harm. Fortunately for us, China and India, who have, which have high natural levels of fluoride, they are doing the research because they don't have a fluoridation program to protect. But, yeah. But you, can, but you can fight this on a, on a local level. You can fight it. And uh, so, for example, in our town, we don't have fluoride. And it's, uh, it came up that it was going to happen. And the whole village got together and, and said, we got to go up there. We got to go in the city hall. And we got to uh, you know, demonstrate and say, we don't want this. Yeah. So it didn't happen. Over 200 communities worldwide have stopped fluoridation since 2010. Some big, some small. But it, mm -hmm. it, you're right. Yeah. We, can, we can fight it. We can certainly stop it coming in if, you, if you're not fluoridated and you actually can get it out even yeah. if you are fluoridated.